Hi, Lee. My name is Brandon, and I'm going to be giving you some feedback on your first writing assignment from Lecture 1 on Compare and Contrast Writing. Let's begin. We're going to start with organization, then we're going to talk about content, uh, vocabulary, and grammar. Okay. Overall, you wrote about just under uh, 200 words. I think it was 193 words, which is good. And uh, the title looks good. Your first sentence is the topic sentence, and that you did quite well. Uh, you have one, two, three uh, background sentences. Uh, it's a little much. Um, you could have done a little bit less, uh, but it's not bad. Um, and then you have uh, your introduction to similarities. You have first, there is a lot of similarities. I'll underline that. And then you have an example about the size. Uh, and then you have, um, and then you talk about how the schools separate the classes is your point number two. So that's your, and so we have main point for similarities and then you have point one and point two. Um, but you start point one's reasoning your detail out with, for example, you really need to say just my university is as small as the ELI or the English Language Institute. And then you give your example in detail. Um, it's a little early. I, I don't suggest this uh, example being that here. Okay, I'll mark that out. And then you have your point about first uh, being small and then also second one about separating the classes. And then you have your, you have two details about that. And then you have your introduction to the differences. And then for your two differences, you talk about students can choose uh, their classes as the first one. And for the second one, you say it's more comfortable about the comfort is the second one. And then you have a conclusion. I like this phrase in conclusion. It's very good. And then you have, um, you have this fact and then you personalize it. That's good. I had originally suggested putting those as one sentence, but it's okay. It's not a bad choice. So we have a good topic sentence. It's, a, it's a similarities first and then differences. And then you have you talk about similarities and then the differences. Okay. As far as content goes, I mentioned before that this would not be an example. Um, another thing that's a bit odd here is that you say, um, you say, first of all, my university is as small as the ELI. In fact, my university is one of the smallest universities in my city. And then you say the English uh, Language Institute is small too, so they look similar. So you're, here you're saying that they're both small, but you already said that. So that sentence uh, is really unnecessary. It had been better to put something else there, okay? It's just saying the same thing as this first one, all right? And then going down here uh, about the differences. I like your points. Uh, the only problem is that there's no details or examples after them. So um, that would have been something better to write. You have, they can choose the classes. They cannot choose an ELI. Another sentence after this would have been better. And then you get into the fact that it's more comfortable and then you need another sentence after that. Okay. Uh, so that's for, that's your content things you might try doing in the future. And as far as vocabulary, I've already mentioned the four examples, which are uh, generally good choices, such as this one. Um, I like that. Um, and I like the uh, second here and the use of first here. Those are good transition words. Um, uh, problems with vocabulary. Uh, we have hometown should be one word. And um, I would also suggest this phrase here, changing it. You have, uh, 
it's not absolutely wrong, but it's not the best way of writing it. I, similar is a good adjective, but you need the word similarities. And differences. So these are nouns, and they would work better in that situation. Other good vocabulary choices include uh, this one uh, using both. We talked before about that being a good one for uh, similarities, like they both have similarities and differences. Um, uh, good choice for but here. And then I like then, if that works out nicely there. And then we mentioned before already that in conclusion, the great phrase to identify when the conclusion is coming, especially since you have two conclusion sentences, you put that as a first one. That makes it really clear for everybody. And, uh, and then as far as grammar, let's talk about grammar now. Uh, you notice the blue highlighting outlined highlight, here. Uh, this is okay. They were, uh, this is just a Microsoft Word suggestion. It's okay. You can use the passive. Just make sure you know you're using that. Here and here, for your introduction to similarities and introduction to differences sentences, we have a problem. There is an unusual uh, subject. You often need, you have, basically, you have to look at the object after the, after the, the predicate, after the verb is. You have to look at the predicate and look if it's singular or plural. So because this is plural, you would change this to are. So there are a lot of similarities. Similarities are. Uh, like I said, this is not the usual way in English. Usually you look at the subject to decide what the verb will be. But in this case, it's different. There are a lot of differences. Um, so that fixes those problems. And then I mentioned this one already. I'd like to mention that uh, the ELI, uh, here you have the English Language Institute. That's really good. The ELI, that's good. Here, we're not using that one anymore. By the way, you need a, a Y there for city. And um, the other times you say English Institute right here, the English, you need to have the, the English Language Institute. Another option, instead of the, I'm sorry, instead of saying English Language Institute several times, you could just say the Institute. And it'd be a, it would not be capitalized because it's just in general. That way you don't have to keep saying the same thing or this institute if you want it to be more clear, this institute. Another problem is that when you say the phrase one of the smallest, smallest is a uh, superlative adjective. And after that, you always have to have a plural because there must be more than one in order to have one of the. I would also suggest putting um, all of the. So I'm connected. Students cannot choose all of the classes instead of all classes. Uh, it's a little bit more clear. So that's your grammar. Overall, in conclusion, I think that you've done an excellent job with uh, content and organization for the most part. Uh, you need to work a little bit on vocabulary and grammar, especially adding a little bit more variety to your grammar so you're not using the same phrases and words all the time. But this is a really good paper, and I look forward to seeing more work by you in the future. Good luck.